Welcome back to 23 Minute Reads with me, Maya D. This is kind of like my virtual book club because in these five minute or so videos, I share with you my takeaways from my current reading. Right now, that is The Dance Claimed Me. As a part of my 23 to 23 challenge, I'm reading 23 minutes per day every day as an action of self-love, as an investment into myself, and as a way of providing myself with some consistency in an ever-changing world. Hoping that you will join me along in this journey by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and dropping some comments down there in that comment section so that there's an actual dialogue going on. Having in mind that while I have several decades of experience as an educator, a researcher, and a curriculum writer, I'm not the know-all be-all for this book. I'm simply providing a space for dialogue. Well, this week I read pages 56 through 96, and here are my three takeaways. Takeaway number one is Rosenwald. Well, I've read um, in several spaces that Dr. Pearl Primus was the last person to receive um, monies to receive an award from the Rosenwald Foundation, but it's in the African transformation section of the book that I found a little more insight into Rosenwald and who Rosenwald was. So Julius Rosenwald was a philanthropist, was the president of the Sears Company, was a leftist, and was very much interested in African American organizations and Jewish American organizations. Rosenwald left very clear directions that the funds in the foundation needed to be completely exhausted by the 25th year, 25 years after his death, following his death. This means that when Edwin Embry saw Dr. Pearl Primus at Fisk University on April, I had to look at my notes, April 28th, 1948, we were approaching, or it was approaching that 25th anniversary, so towards the end of the foundation's um, time. Primus was awarded and used that award to finance that 18 month study that was conducted in Africa, which takes us to takeaway number two, which is Walter Terry. Our friends and family greatly impact the work that we do. Here's a quote from the book. Terry then detailed the body positions Pearl mastered with the goal of academizing these techniques for use in the American education system and recounts the range and the diversity of her research. Terry, Walter Terry, was a dance criti critic, excuse me, a journalist and a friend that act, in, act as like an advocate for Primus's work in a way that shifted the public's perception of Pearl because it allowed the public to see the transformation that she was going through and the scope of her research, which takes me to takeaway number three, our final takeaway. Takeaway number three is funga and Sorry, you hear my bangles. <laughs> Takeaway number three is funga. In 2005, while teaching in the Gambia, Baba Chuck Davis said it, that it was the 1960s when funga became, when funga started being performed at a warp speed, excuse me. I began dancing in my study, or not I began dancing, but I began my study of West African dance in the early 1990s. So this would be after that time um, that Dr. Pearl Primus has developed her lecture demonstration model that she uses to disseminate her research about Africa. It's also after the time where Dr. Pearl Primus makes a comment of how she felt that Funga was now a bastardized version of what she had taught many moons before. There are many stories about um, about how Funga got to the U.S. and whether Dr. Pearl Primus performed it first or um, Asadada DeFore performed it first or even which companies in the U.S. performed it. But what I found to be very beautiful in this book was the section, um, in this section it reminds us that in New York during the 1950s, the drummers were drumming for DeFore Primus, uh, Dunham, and Baba Olatunji, which means that this um, 
navigation of the drummers between companies makes a for an, a very efficient way for the rhythms, the music, and things to travel, which is a beautiful thing, but also makes it a little more difficult to track where things begin, right? So it makes it easier for the stuff to travel, but a little harder to pinpoint where it began. But in this section, I also learned that there was a chant that predated the Fanga Alafia Ashe Ashe chant, which was completely absent of my West African dance history prior to this moment. So I would love to know what you've learned from the book. Are you reading the book with me? Um, what are your thoughts so far? I would love to see those things down in the comments so that we are continuing to grow and to share together. So let me know that. Stay blessed. Spread a good word and I'll see you again soon.